So, Andy Hug versus Masaki Satake. I have my notes for this one. I love K1, and this is some stuff going on. So, let me guys know if you guys can hear it well. I set it to a low volume on purpose. So here we go. This is at K1 Illusion 93, I believe. So check it out. So Andy Hug coming out. If you don't know about Andy Hug and Masaki Satake here, here they're doing strictly karate. Like I believe it's uh, Seikodan Karate. If I said it right. Yeah, Seikodan. Like they were both Kyo I think uh, both of them were Kyokushin style fighters. And then there was like a, a lot of karate lore here. Basically, it's a slightly different one. And this type of karate... They allow extra rounds where it actually turns into a kickboxing match and you can hit to the face. And look at these intros. And also, this is the, this, the, the name of this event was K1 Illusion. And this is a world tournament karate. So if you won the K1 Illusion 93, you were that year's K1 93 world champion. So you won the Illusion belt, which is the coolest thing in the world. K1 had such awesome names. So yeah, Masaki Satake, he was like, I believe, a six-time national champion. Like, he actually was able, he was given the job at a television studio, like, hey, you can come work at a TV studio, you know, which is a very rare thing. I bet, I bet in Japan, too, even worse than America, to get into those types of jobs. And I doubt it paid that well. It was just a cool thing, like, oh, I work for a TV studio. And he's like, nah, man, I want to do karate full time. And when Satake, Masaki Satake here, did karate, he was winning all over Japan. So he was a very, very prestigious karate fighter. And he made it to the finals in K1. This is a three-day tournament. Both Andy and Masaki had to win twice in one day on the Friday, I believe, once on a Saturday, and then the finals on Sunday. And I kind of like that Masaki has the no sleeves. That's, that's cool. I'm, I dig that. But yeah, for those who are here, let me know if like uh, you guys want the volume, want the volume raised up. So yeah, they're about to start going. So yeah, at this point, I believe, let's see. He was like a, a six-time, a six-time karate national champion was a, was a Masaki Satake. He won six times national, or six or seven-time national champion. Yeah, seven-time Japanese national champ. And Andy Hug was the more decorated of the two. Andy was a, I believe, as of right now, as the recording, of, well, not the, as of right now, but as of the time of the fight uh, started, he was a six-time Europe, a six-time Swiss national champion, a two-time Euro champion, and he was already a world karate champion, and I believe in Kyoku, uh, maybe in Kyokushin style. But yeah, at, this is uh, the first Seikodan title fight that they, I believe he's had. So he, he technically be two-time world champion but in different styles of uh, competition karate so yeah i really so yeah they're gonna they're gonna be hitting hard to their bodies and all that they, they, this is all striking to the body no oh, okay look at that they're going for clinches oh wow did he click okay i'm not sure if uh if the rule set permits knees to the head unless he was trying to go higher on the body Ooh, that was a crazy cool karate <laughs> high kick so yeah as you could see here, this is a thing you'll see that they do in jiu-jitsu matches too for those who actually compete in jiu-jitsu or other competitions that require you to wear a belt is that uh, one person, if they don't have a different colored gear where they aren't wearing headgear and gloves like a, in kickboxing and boxing, you'll see the red corner or the blue corner. So what they do is they'll give you a different colored belt like Masaki's wearing. So Satake's wearing the, Masaki Satake is wearing the red belt. He has two belts. To differentiate, he's the B corner or the other corner. And that's just the thing that they did for that sort of thing. So it was always pretty cool when they would do stuff like, oh, crap. That was a sick axe kick. Did he catch him off, off balance there? I got to see that one more time. All right, so. So, okay. Yeah, they're, oh, wow, that landed clean. That was a clean, 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 like, axe kick to the jaw. Also, this Masa I can't tell if Masaki's missing teeth. I think I think they're fighting without mouth guards. I, hey, I'm not a karate. Well, technically, I do practice karate, but I never competed in karate. Oh my god, that axe kick is insane! Like he he's landed like 
almost hit the mark twice. Now, I probably wouldn't work that well in MMA, but... Yeah, I don't think it's ever worked that well in MMA. I don't even think Mirko Kroll got Mr. Axe kick for, like, stuff like that. I think he mostly threw it in kickboxing. Damn. Andy Hug, man. He's like a... He's a pioneer for the low kick. Oh, wow. Andy's cheating there. He grabbed the ropes. I don't think the ref saw it. I'm going to raise the volume a tiny bit. Oh, that was a loud one. Oh, Andy, I think, is winning this first round for sure. Unless I'm understand. Oh, wow. Yeah, Andy's got... That absolutely seems to be the more technical karate guy. And the thing is, is that Andy, I think, was about as popular, if not a little bit less, than Masaki Satake. Mostly because of the fact that Andy, as you can see, had a very pretty style. Very pretty, very exciting style. And he's just a handsome guy. Look at him. Look at the guy. He's a very graceful man. Oh, and look at that. He would always throw cool, graceful moves. And Masaki, he's a very dirty karate fighter. And I'm not saying dirty. Oh, no. Was that legal? Oh, yeah. The ref told him don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie. I don't speak to you. End of the first round. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah. Also, you know what the worst competitions are? Point karate. Point Muay Thai. Point Muay Thai doesn't work. So, yeah. I don't like point in white tie. I think it's good. I think it's good for in terms of a development as a fighter. All right. Damn, the rounds like how long are these rounds? Damn, there's no timer for these rounds. Ooh. Yeah, I think was I think Andy took that round. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> he tried to back slap him. That's funny. Let's see if anyone else has joined. But yeah, for you th four people that are here, I appreciate you guys greatly. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys for enjoying my BS. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Remove this. Oh, there you go. Oh, they called for the low kick. Oh, that was a good side kick. Yeah, I really, I don't see how Masaki Satake could be winning this so far. Unless my Andy Hug bias is showing. Oh, no. The fight went away for a tiny second. Because I do like Andy Hug. And I'll be honest, I'm not much of a fan of him. Oh, my God. That is such a rainbow-esque X kick. It seems that Masaki can't get a lot of stuff going. Ooh, there we go. Nice knee. Ooh, good knee by Masaki. Like a little jump knee. Masaki is definitely the less graceful fighter. He seems to try to use his uh, ability... I kind of want to see how he could perform that tournament. I'm starting to suspect he would use his size a bit. And would probably use more uh, dirty style of boxing and kick, punching and kicking. Again, when I say dirty, I don't necessarily mean like a... Uh... Yeah, Andy feels like he's winning. Again, I'm not a... I won't be... I'm not an expert on this type of style of karate kickboxing. The only karate, full contact karate I've ever seen is like a race that I paid attention to a lot was um, the American kickboxing scene, which a lot for those who don't know, a lot of those a lot of that American kickboxing scene would be full contact. However, low kicks weren't really much of a thing. I believe they wanted people kicking and like uh, to prevent like bo and you had to throw a kick. Like there's some people in MMA and like kickboxing who rarely ever throw kicks. Like they mostly do like a weird like they do a lot of the exciting like Superman punches, back fists hammer fist stuff like that but they don't really throw many kicks and this to prevent like oh wow that was an incredible like more of a spinning that wasn't really much of a wheel kick like turning high side kick just the way he threw it but eh, just for simplicity's sake it's a wheel kick like a little wheel kick there and he threw that from like yeah he threw that from like a, just a side kick or a little punch yeah masaki is like he can't get much going right here i think uh the diversity of Andy Hug has him figured out. 
However, he's still in this fight, in my opinion. It's just I think he's kind of losing it, clearly. I haven't watched any of these fights. I've only been reading about them. And I would mostly watch the other stuff of like uh, what other fighters did. Like, I would watch Masaki Satake's kickboxing fights. I'm not sure if he did karate like he did kickboxing. Because kickboxing, he would kind of like... You do that like a walk you down dirty style of fighting where it like it wasn't necessarily the prettiest but it worked that's how he won the, i believe yeah masaki i think angie masaki after these fights would both go on to win a, both an even amount of world titles they both would be like four-time world champions however andy would win the prestigious k196 and would be runner up like two times after that he'd make the finals three times which is kind of crazy i don't think any other heavyweight kickboxer in k1 style has ever done that but yeah, as of right here, yeah, I think Andy Andy is absolutely winning this fight. They're getting into clinches a lot now, and I think Masaki's getting a little frustrated because I think his tall stance is being... Oh, okay, a good body shot by Masaki. He landed a good cross to the chest. Good. Ooh, he got thrown down too. Oh, wow, that was a crazy combination. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God, that was fucking cool. That was the coolest animation I've seen. Wait, wait. Before this starts, let's see that combo again. Yeah, that was like a, he was going for like a jump a jump roundhouse kind of and then went to like the like lead head kick. That was cool as shit. Oh, you got to love Andy Hug, man. This is why he was popular. He was an athletic specimen and a very, very... It wasn't just his athleticism, because you can't just be an athlete and win. If that was the case, Greg Hardy would be world champion right now. So, yeah, uh, would be the world champion of the UFC. So, <laughs> no, like, uh, he, he, like, Andy Hug wasn't just an athletic beast. He really was a karateka, like a true karateka and kickboxer. And I believe is this... Yep, this is the extension round. So, extension rounds, I believe, in this style of Seiko Dan... Bleach Brown Sekodan. Let me see my notes. Because I have written I think I have the proper name, proper pronunciation written down. Sedo Kaikan, okay. Sedo Kaikan was the name of it. So in Sedo Kaikan, <laughs> they would do this, which is kind of cool, I'm not going to lie. Because it's like, alright, fuck this traditional bullshit. We're going to do some real kickboxing. <laughs> but no, like, uh, th this is an interesting stuff. It's a nice little twist. I'm not sure if Sato Kaikan is still, like, big in Japan. I'm assuming it'd be big there. And speaking of karate, for those who watch Karate Combat, Karate Combat's the coolest shit ever. If you're, like, you want to watch true full-contact karate. Like, it has everything that you'd want. The only weird thing I've noticed about Karate Combat... Other oh, wow, that was a crazy cross, and Sataki just ate that. Clean. I don't see, though, why, but this is an extension round, though, meaning the judges couldn't see it for one side, and I don't think I agree with that. I think Andy was winning the fight, so this, I don't think it should be in this round. I think it's, yeah, yeah, I think they have, I think it was two-minute rounds. Yeah, yeah, I think, oh, wow, look at that, look at that, and the thing is, that was off of his lead side. No, no, his rear side. That was his power side. He just switched stands, and like while he was in the orthodox, he threw it. Oh, those are some serial gone vibes. Oh, look at that. And see right there, that little. Hey, what? Oh, okay. Well, I was about to praise Masaki for that, but like, uh, yeah, those little moments is that Masaki's really game. It's just that I think for someone as big and as long he is, he kind of prefers to fight really close, and. I think he's got the longer legs than someone like Andy Hug. He doesn't have the kicking dexterity of it. I think there's a clear difference in that. But like, if I was Masaki, like, look, he he throw he, like, he gets blitz and he backs up with his hands up a tiny bit. Now, I'm not sure if that's you know the best course of action for someone like Masaki. Ooh, oh wow, they're throwing down here. And Andy's winning this... Oh, I really do feel Andy's winning this whole thing.
Ooh. Sorry about that, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, when I was watching Hajime no Ippo, the boxing anime, like, uh, and I would always lose it when they would start boxing, and, uh, freaking, you'd hear the, the crowd go, Ippo, shit like that, and I'm like, oh, do they really do that? Like, I understand, like, it's just that in Western audiences, I guess you don't really get to hear people scream like that, because the audience is just all loud. It's just a hive of people screaming, cheering, and all that. <sighs> and you only hear that when you see, like, British fans, like, scream in unison. However, here, because the Japanese are usually much more quiet, even when they're excited, you could still hear, like, people just scream out. But, yeah, maybe I'm not understanding, because it seems like they're they're having another extension round. Unless, oh wait, no, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. When I was looking this up, it turns out they had like a shitload of extension rounds. Yeah, 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 So these, this, this, this fight was like seven rounds total. And again, I think the first round went to Andy. Like, they should have been over. Like, I don't see how they can't see a winner unless they're just being, unless they really, really, really like Misaki's walk-down pressure, which is ridiculous because that shows me they don't watch a lot of kickboxing. And I think there might be a bias here. This is on this is Masaki's town, but like at the same time, I don't really think there should be much of a bias because Andy was a big star in Japan. Like people did like him a lot. It's not like he was some unknown. It's not like you could just rob him. Like with one FC, right? When like Okre Yun beat Christian Lee, for the, which is a crazy good fight. Like Christian Lee, you know, being the sister uh, sister brother of Angela Lee. And uh, what happened was is that uh, Oak won. And I thought he won, but it was a really close fight. And then Christian Lee's like, that was literally says it was bullshit. It's like, you fucking child. He's like a 22-year-old guy, but like, he's still a grown man. Oh my god, that was a crazy exchange. Still an incredible fighter. Still a good champion. It's just, then behave like one on the day of his loss, unfortunately for him. Hopefully he develops more as a fighter, more as a man. And I think he's a dad now. So I'm sure he'll look back and go, maybe I shouldn't have acted like that. Oh man, he can't, he covers so much reach with that. It's ridiculous. All right, so that's the end of that round. Let's see. But yeah. I do think uh, the more I watch this, the more I think there was some fucking Japanese tomfoolery where it was like, hey, you gotta, you gotta let the hometown hero, we gotta let the Japanese win. Also, non King didn't happen. Also, I was going on Bitch Shoot the other day, and there's this dude who uploads like <laughs> MMA fights. There's like two. But like, it's just MMA fights, right? And it's like, instead of like saying, oh, uh, like Terrence McKinney versus uh, Drew Dober, which is a great fight, it just happened. They'll be like, White Shad, Drew Dover destroys Ugly Ape. And it's like, Jesus Christ, like, God damn. <laughs> like, holy hell, you fuckers. Oh, yeah, here. So the judges couldn't decide a winner. And I'm not going to say, like, Andy completely beat him down easily, no effort. But I do think he kind of won clear. And look at the difference. Like, holy crap. Masaki's a giant man, but, like, good God, Andy's s sexy Andy hug. But, yeah, this is how they're going to settle with board breaking. Fucking board breaking, or as it's called in Japanese, Tamashiwari, which is a cool name. But yeah, I'm, let's see. Does he go through all of them? Oh, oh, oh I, I'm gonna raise the volume for this. <laughs> Cell phone. <laughs> Jesus. Wait, did he break those boards? Did those boards all break? That was a powerful strike. Oh, Andy's looking like, damn, he broke a lot. <laughs> yeah, Masaki, damn, he smoked those boards. All right, let's go with Andy.
Oh. I think he bro he broke less boards for sure. So that means Misaki wins. Now I think it is kind of cool that a turn that someone can win like that. However, I wouldn't. Mm, I don't necessarily agree with that because. I guess it like again. This is still karate, so it's tied in traditionalism. It's tied in like uh, that sort of stuff. So Masaki would be considered the winner in this, but like ah, if you're looking at it through the sense of just a fight, I wouldn't. I don't like that. However, it is kind of cool that that could happen. Like me, if I lost that way, I wouldn't be like yeah, I, I lost. I wouldn't be like I lost the fight. I'd be like I lost the competition. If that makes sense. Like yeah, he he was technically the better traditional karateka. Since he was able. However, I felt like Andy was the better kick, was the better fighter. I think he, I really do think he won the fight. I kind of disagree with the decision, but it goes down as the history in the history books as the. So yeah, Masaki Sitake wins his first world title, I think, in karate, in just straight karate, like pure karate, traditional karate. And there's a oh wow, he got he, he didn't win a medal, he won a belt. Nice. That's really cool. It's a nice belt. Oh, okay, I guess he wins a medal and the belt? Alright, whatever. Yeah, let's take both. I think one's a first place thing, and the other... Yeah, I, I'm not sure if, like, a traditional karate gave out, like, world championship belts like that. Yeah, there, there it is again. So I'm just looking at it. I'm the replay. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. And I do like K1s, like, they would make it seem like some grand thing. Like, oh. I keep forgetting to not do that. It cuts away for, like, a microsecond. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then he gets the trophy. Oh, wait, did he get a second place trophy? Like, a runner-up trophy? Yeah, and there's the tournament. I'm assuming all the other guys there were the guys who, like, where they ranked in the tournament. Oh, Andy isn't happy. Poor Andy. Rip Andy. Damn, he he actually does look pretty heartbroken. <laughs> That's a great image for Misaki. Good for him. But I don't think he won. But good for him. So, right, so here we are in the second fight. Now, this happened. Let's see here. When did this happen? Because I got to get my facts straight. Oh. So yeah, when did this happen? Let's see. So I believe this happened at no, no this wasn't the the K one. This was at this rematch happened in '96, I believe. And what happens here is oh let's see here. Ah. So after this, they both would go on to win. By the time they would fight, so Masaki Satake at this point was 13-5. And two, so he fought some pretty good people. He, his losses were to like Ernesto Hoos, Peter Art, Sam Greco, Jerome LeBanner, people like that. And he won four titles already, like four heavyweight titles. And the and so at this point, I believe by the time he fought Andy, he had won four titles, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, that was at this time. And this event, and here, Andy, I believe. So let's see. Yeah, so Andy was 15-2, and, and he'd won, uh, he'd also won four, uh, I think he'd won, no, no, he'd won two titles at the time of this fight. So, this event was called K1 Star Wars 96. Now, I know, thinking to the Japanese, oh, it's like, oh, they're big stars. Oh, this commentary's a bit loud, so I'm gonna have to lower that Japanese commentary. Sorry, it's gonna be more quiet. So, yeah, this event was Star Wars 96. There, right there, I think that's good. Yeah, 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 so Star Wars 96, and they both had won world belts at this time. And so I think this is just a rematch. I think they just did it like, hey, let's do this rematch for Misaki and Andy. And they're going to fight a little differently this time. Obviously, there's strikes to the head. They both have more kickboxing, punching. I think Andy has the advantage in kicking still. I think the real difference maker in something like this would be the punching ability. And I would hope Misaki like, uh, improved his punching ability. Hopefully he's able to do more, uh, more something more boxing. Like who has the better straight boxing? Oh, and there's the Andy hug 
freaking signature spinning wheel kick to the leg. Gotta love that shit. So yeah, that, that at this point, oh yeah, interesting enough. At this fight, Andy Hug when he won his world, won his first world title, he fought Duke Rufus. For those who don't know who Duke Rufus is, he's the brother of Rick Rufus, a very notable uh, kickboxing world champion. But also for those in the modern day, Duke is the head coach of Rufus Sport, so he's like the coach of uh, Tyron Woodley, the Pettis brothers, Ben Askren, and a bunch of other guys that you might know, like uh, Paul Felder, uh, I think Gerald Merchart too. So yeah, he's a pretty good coach. He's made of world champions. And Andy Hook fucking obliterated him when he was a, a fighter. Duke was a better coach than fighter, I believe. Not No, no, no I can't say that. Oh, there's an axe kick. But like Andy just destroyed him to the body. Like and, like Duke fought him kind of similar to Masaki Sataki fights. Just walks him down. And Andy just ripped his body. Like on the back foot. On the back foot body kicks. On the back foot front kicks. Like... And in the third round, he just crumpled him. He couldn't take it no more. Really, really good performance. And the crazy thing is that Masaki Satake was having a good career up until then. He was fighting really good people. And he was, like, really, really enthusiastic to be a kickboxer. Andy Hug had a record of, like, what's it called? Like, 12-4? and four? No, no, I think it was, like, 8-4 and four at a certain point. And he, like, was depressed. And he's like, oh, man, should I... And that was after losing, I think, to Peter Arts. I think he lost to Peter Arts or... And he lost to Ernesto Hoost. But then he beat Jerome LeBan. He's like, yeah, I'm still good because I beat someone like Jerome. Like the really good French, like one of the legendary French kickboxers. Oh, can't catch the leg, Andy, I think. Oh, yeah, Andy did some Muay Thai, which is why I grabbed the leg probably. I think K1 allows you to... I'm not sure if they allow you to grab the leg. I know Glory does, but you can only do like one motion. Glory tries to mix up K1 and Muay Thai a bit. Glory rules, remember? Speaking of fucking glory, did you guys watch the glory event? Glory 80? Fucking hooligans ruining the Bader rematch with Rosef. I think that's how you say it. Rososek or Rososef? The Polish guy who smoked Bader in his last fight. The thing is, is like, uh, Bader was losing to him again. He got fucking... Like, he got fucking... Like, that dude is really good at finding kill shots, man. Like, that switch knee he landed on Botter, like, last week was crazy. And also, I think uh, I think Andy won. That was a close round. I think Andy won it. Just a more offensive overall. Labrador Retriever Tokyo. Interesting. So, yeah, this event, K1 Star Wars, as I was saying... I guarantee you the Japanese, when they saw that, they were like, oh yeah, this is because of, because uh, they're both stars, and the stars are going to war. And I guarantee you whoever probably made that thing probably doesn't even know what Star Wars is, so. <laughs> so Star Wars wouldn't come back to like the 2000s. When did you say Menace come out? Like, 01, 02? Was it post 9-11? I don't think it was a 90s film, was it? Ooh. Ooh, there you go. Hell yeah. I love that move. Love that move. Like, throw a kick, then throw a punch. Tony Ferguson would do that. Although he probably took it from one of these legends. Maybe not exactly them, but yeah. So yeah. So here, I believe uh, Andy was 15-4. and four. So yeah, I think he had a bit of a better record than Masaki. Yeah, yeah Masaki was 13-5. and five. And two draws or no contests, I think. So yeah, pretty close records. Yeah, I think that was an even first round, but I have to give it to Andy. So let's see here, the sizing each other up. But yeah, I think Andy's really yeah, he's using his southpaw stance really good. And Jesus Christ, Masaki Satake, man, he just does not care for getting hit. Like he just ate like a giant cross. Ooh, that was a really good body hit. Ooh, that was good. Like Andy, man, Andy really knows how to play the southpaw game, which is a thing I struggle with when I fight southpaws. He's like, me, I like kickboxing and I spar a lot and I do a lot of MMA. So like, uh, not to say I'm a fighter or anything like that, but like, ooh, that was a good re return kick by Masaki. So Masaki needs more of that. I think Masaki could use a a lot of that sort of stuff because Masaki, he's got. The, I think he, I, although he might not be the, might have that same explosiveness as a, uh, as Andy. He's still a heavyweight. You gotta respect that. Like, heavyweights, does, doesn't matter. Like, who's the most pillow-fisted heavyweight people think of? Oh, Tyson Fury. He's pillow-fisted. 
motherfucker still knocked the fuck out of Deontay Wilder. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, there's no such thing as pillow fist in this division. Even the fat bastard like Andy Ruiz. Ooh, that was a really good counter jab. Really good counter jab by Misaki. And there, that's what he needs. Uh, the thing is, he stands right up in the in the clinch. Misaki kind of stands up, and he, I think he's trying to go for those Tyson Fury esque body punches. But I think he should just go for knees. I think he should just knee there. He has the longer legs, so he can do short, choppy knees and wear down. Because Andy Hug, man, he's a movement based fighter. At least in these fights, he's very he's moving a lot. He's very in and out. There we go. Sorry, if I'm not talking too much, I'm just watching the hell out of this fight. Oh, really good head kick. Great head kick by Andy. I think it was blocked, though. I don't think... Uh, there we go. Good. Oh, man. that's a, Me, I'm, I'm... Throwing inside leg kicks is an art of itself. It's kind of hard to competently land. Because me, I always hit people's knees. I think I'm too far away. I think I gotta step into it more. I think uh, Masa Masaki uh, kind of throws his kicks at a slightly awkward angle. Like, it seems like he's hitting more with the foot. Yeah, I know karate's more at the foot, but oh, okay. Yeah, for sure Andy's winning this one. This is a five-round fight, I think. Hey, that's the old crow. Are you here? Appreciate it if you are. <laughs> Thanks for liking my gab post. <laughs> Hopefully that fucking chat's working. Watch my chat not work at all. Like, no one can use it. it just doesn't work. Unusable. So, alrighty. Here we go. Oof. Oh, he's doing that low high. The thing is, is people who still do that, like Vol Alexander Volkov, is a really strange guy. Because I think someone like him would have done incredible in K1. And unfortunately, he got smoked by Aspinall. Because, like, Volkov, even though he's a brown ball in jiu-jitsu, he fucking sucks at jiu-jitsu, dude. The guy can't even pull guard on people. But then again, Aspinall is just Frank Mir 2.0, but with better boxing. So... I think Aspinall would probably be is the closest. Is, uh, he's most likely to be the second ever UFC Brit champion, and he'd be an actual real champion, unlike Bisping. Not to shit on Bisping, but I don't think he was a very good champion. And I think he got lucky. Not in his fight against Rockhold. He did the right thing there. I mean, it's a just perfect time, perfect place. But at the same time, you can say that about most fighters. I just not a big Bisping fan. He's a good dude, amazing guy, amazing fighter too. It's just, ah, people overrate him. Ducked Romero, ducked a lot of people, and still got destroyed by GSP. However, he got a D Day that good fight against him. Oh, and right there, see, Masaki's such an ugly fighter that I think he should just get in close. Like, I think if Masaki just went crazy, like that, like that. Like, but the thing is, is uh, when he does that, he's throwing one punch at a time. That looks really good. Like, Hug went down because he ate a stiff jab. Now, it wasn't, now he didn't get dropped. He got caught on the slip. But again, when he's at this range, Andy Hug, of course he's going to use his kicks. Of course he's going to pick him apart at the feet. It's just that I don't think Masaki Satake's... He kind of bullies a lot of his opponents. I'm going to watch Masaki Satake stuff. But yeah, anyway. But a little flash from the past is that uh, a little controversy that people have is that uh, in his early fights, like against Duke Rufus, like I think it was Patrick Smith. Yeah, I think it might have been Patrick Smith that he fought. Like there was a lot of controversy there because a lot of people think that uh, Hug did a fixed fight against Smith. And the crazy thing about that is that uh, I don't think it was fixed. He probably just lost. But uh, I just find it wild. That people think Andy would just 
do that. Oh, oh! That was some crazy combination there. And I love these karate style combinations. The only people who do this sort of stuff, at least effectively still, Wonder Boy, but he's not, he really is on a decline. I think uh, people have figured out his style. And that's what I think uh, the issue with most of the fighters, like Tony Ferguson, Tyron Woodley, people who were absolutely monstrous in their prime, but now, yeah, I think they're out, people get figured out. But anyway, so yeah, Andy Hug, man, his kickboxing combos are more, still karate influenced. Like, that whole, like, uh, like punch from the same side as you're kicking or kick from the same side as you're punching is very much karate. Like the school of uh, the school of, karate, of of full con- of regular Dutch kickboxing and Muay Thai usually teach from my experience because I've been to those schools. Like mostly Muay Thai because America has more Muay Thai regular than traditional style kickboxing. Those that would be just a karate school. They'd be like, all right, powerful left hook, powerful right kick, powerful cross, powerful left head kick, stuff like that, or powerful left body kick, stuff like that. These Wranglers are in swimsuits. They're very thin ladies. <laughs> so yeah, man, I think Masaki is, is really got to get something going here. He's got to hurt Andy because he's in the fourth round. He's got to drop him. He's got to drop my boy Andy. Alrighty, Andy. Ooh, wow! Oh my God, the height on that was ridiculous. Look at that shit. My Lord, and then he goes for those head kicks and all that. Like they're so pretty. However, this is probably why Andy got knocked out. He did fight with his hands a bit low. He never really had him that high. And I think this is. And I think part. Oh. Did he get, no, I don't think that was a drop. He caught his leg. Just the ankle kind of hit it. He grabbed his leg and punched with it. Muay Thai style. Ooh, and then that head kick so pretty. He pivots off of the kick. It's so nice. I think uh, karate head kicks are better. Or kick, but full contact kick plus whatever. Karate head kicks I think are better than Muay Thai head kicks. So I think Muay Thai head kicks, although I think they have more destructive damage because it's Muay Thai. I believe the accuracy of uh, the karate head kick usually leads to more knockouts. I mean, look at Wonder Boy. Look at his fight against Dan Stitchin, where he fucking just hit the head kick, and it was really a slap, but boom, it just slapped him. Legit one of the most beautiful knockouts you'll see, because Dan Stitchin, like, watch that fight. His mouthpiece falls out, and it's drooling. Like, it's in, like, holy shit, it's something out of a movie. Like, Wonder Boy's first fight, man, ridiculous. So, Steven Thompson, gotta love him. Oh, look at that. He did a little stutter step. I thought he was going to go to the body with that. Then he, then he goes to the body that time. Yeah, Masaki, like, I think he just has a bad game plan. Like, he's he's walking back. He's, oh. Like, he's circling away from the power, but, like, oh, he did that. Oh, I never got good at that move. Attacking the rear leg is very difficult. Like most people don't opt for it. They only attack the rear leg once it stops being the rear leg, meaning they switch stands. <laughs> but then you saw like uh like I believe who's really good at attacking the rear leg? Who's the king of it? Turkish Tyson, what's his name? He would do that a lot. He'd like sprint in there and just get the angle and just obliterate people. Turkish Tyson, he would do that. Gokan Saki, yeah, Gokan Saki would do that. He actually did it in his last fight. When he came back to kickboxing after getting smoked in MMA, unfortunately. Hey, man, you can't you can't be the be- you can't be great at all, man. Adesanya wasn't even that good at kickboxing. He never won the world title, but hey, his kickboxing was really good for MMA. However, he's really tall and lanky, so it benefits him more. Not to shit on Adesanya, you're still a good kickboxer, just never at that elite level. However, in MMA, fuck yeah, he's at the elite level. But yeah, again, I... Okay, now, for those of you who are here who are not writing in my chat, mods, no one's writing my fucking chat. How about you ban these apes for not writing in my chat? Oh, 
That's what I get for streaming on Odyssey. <sighs> Crazy boy. Chris Dawkins is fighting Curtis Blades tonight. He's going to get obliterated. Ooh, that actually went behind the ear. I, it just grazed him, though. I fucking love fights, man. I love MMA. I love martial arts. I'm... I, oh, and that, that... Yo, this is the sickest poster. This is actually a sick poster. They went too hard on that. But yeah, Kai Kara France is fighting. Matt Brown's fighting. Yeah, there's a lot of good fights on there. Donald Bob Grell. I'm excited for him. All right, so last round. Oh, can't wait to see Donald Bob Grell smoke someone. So yeah, here we go. No, Andy's really throwing the kicks on. I think he's trying to solidify. He's not coasting. I really do think, like, how you see it, it's very unlikely this to be a 2-2. I, I disagree with anyone. Who's this that could be a 2-2? I have it 4-0 right now. But I've been looking away, so maybe I've been missing a lot of Masaki. Again, there, that's what Masaki needs. Uh, really, Masaki really should be blitzing him like that. Because... However, Masaki's winning the, the in-fight exchange. It's just that Masaki... Oh, wow. I think Masaki might have got hurt there. Probably the body shot. Because he ate a knee to the body. And this is the fifth round. Oof. Oh, my God. It's just so pretty. He's able to do so much off of that lead leg. Like, front kick. He did that front kick. Oh, there we go. That high kick was blocked, but that punch wasn't. God, karate is a very, very beautiful style. Although I do think the purity, like I, I know I'm preaching to the choir. Most of you guys agree with this. It loses to Muay Thai just as a style. However, in MMA, I think karate is more effective than Muay Thai. Karate and regular kickboxing, or just, yeah, regular kickboxing, I think uh, beats Muay Thai in MMA. Just look at Giga Chikadze versus Barbosa. Karate style kickboxer, smokes the Muay Thai guy. And neither of them were truly like incredible at their sport. Like Barbosa, I think, was a national Muay Thai champion. Brazil does have a lot of good Muay Thai fighters. And uh, Europe has a lot of good karate guys, actually. So it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you see how I think the style is really transit. Like Hakim Dawadu, he's good. He's a more of a Muay Thai guy, too. And who else is a Muay Thai guy? Like Marlon Moraes, those guys are all good, but like, Ah, the the furthest one someone's gone to the title shot, I think is uh, I think is more so. Yeah, and Marais, but then he got fucking smoked. Anderson Silva doesn't count because he did everything. <laughs> He's just his own style of like funky matrix fighting. And again, like look at people who've won; they're coming really, really close. You got Stefan Thompson, the karate guy, and uh, City Mister City Kickboxing, uh, Israel Asanya. Who really he doesn't fight like a Muay Thai guy in them. Oh, that was a good yeah, that was the sickest shit. Oh my lord. Oh, he got dropped though. Although that was more of a slip. He kind of over overcommitted on that actually. Oh, there is again. That is one of his best combos. Masaki can't do much here. Yep. Masaki's really trying to stay in there, but nah, he couldn't. I think that was a solid 5 0. I have it as a solid 5 0 for that one. Yeah, yeah, that's how I see it. I'm going to have to say it's a 5-0. Oh. Whew. I wonder what the audience is yelling. making a gap post because I know what the result is. Are they reading the individual uh, scorecards? Yep. 
All three have it for your winner, Andy Hug. Hell yeah. Lenny and Garcia should be announcing this shit. I don't think that's the Pride Lady. Huh. Oh, yeah. And he won it. And I personally have it 2 0 against Masaki, not gonna lie. Is that just normal sailing? <laughs> Those are weird looking water bottles. But yeah, for more info, like after this, they would fight this time at the Grand. Hey, what? They gave him like a medal? They gave him a little piece of paper? Oh, I guess he wins some sort of honorary belt. Because I did not think... Was this for a belt? I guess he did win a belt this time. I guess I got my info wrong. I got fucking exposed. I'm a retard who doesn't know what he's talking about. Holy shit. Oh, that's a cool belt. I love these cheap-looking belts. I'm just so easily impressed. I like it more than... Ah, that's a nice belt. <laughs> I guess you was for a belt. I'm wrong. <laughs> And they went, damn, they have a lot of a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and then Andy's thing there that he always does. Yeah, that's right. I'm Mr. Axe Kick. The Swiss Axe Kick man. No, yeah. Switzerland, yeah, Swiss. Like Cesaro, Swiss Superman. Andy Hug was the Swiss Superman. <laughs> but yeah, uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, after this, oh my god. I didn't know Masaki. Masaki looked fine. He's probably bleeding from inside of his mouth. So yeah, like after this, they would fight at the Grand Prix quarterfinal. Well, here it is; it's about to start. So yeah, at the GP Grand Prix, the World Grand Prix '97. So yeah, they would fight in the quarterfinal. And look at this; he's wearing a sweatsuit on, trying to sweat it all out. Oh come on! I thought heavyweights didn't cut weight. You fuckers! I wish I was a heavyweight. That way, I won't have to cut weight. Whew. Ooh, I kind of like this footage, this build-up footage. I do not like this cheesy ass. Oh, okay, they're doing a recap. So in the recap, might as well just talk about it. Oh my God, these. Damn, these highlights kind of really do paint the picture of how one side it was. Oh, that was so cool. That was even cooler from that angle. God, it was a thrashing. Just teed off on them. Mas Masaki Satake wants his revenge. He wants to smoke Andy in a revenge bout. Oh, he's wearing the small gloves. Okinawa. But anyway, so yeah. Uh, yeah, in the Grand Prix, this is the quarterfinal. I think they both won their first round bout. So yeah, this is in 97 Grand Prix at this point. they I think uh, most of them just stuck to kickboxing. I don't, can't, I don't I forget if any of them won any world titles after this. I guess I stand, I guess Andy Hug had five world titles now by this point. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Basically, at this point in their careers, I believe this. They both fought like a. This is sort of a year after. This is a year after because they fought at K one ninety six, like that Star Wars ninety six, right? So they would fight three years this after the second time. Then a, one year after this. This is in November. The Grand Prix is in November. The Grand Prix are usually held at the end of the year. And I think uh, sometimes they'd even be held on New Year's Eve. I love those banners. They're so cool. My girlfriend, my, my, excuse me, my fiance, the missus, really likes those banners in general. So she likes them. I like them. I love me. Love me. Love my wife. I ate I, I the Japanese. I ate the British. Of, of American mutts. Simple as. <laughs> Fucking love that meme. 
North FC. Oh yeah, and that was one of those really, really weird, like a uh, right wing boards. Consume product is hilarious because you always see just fucking schizos on there. Like again, I don't really care what your politics are as long as you behave like a human. And when I say behave like a human, like you can talk to me like a human. But Jesus Christ, schizo posting is a thing. And I see it. Well, well Twitter is basically schizo posting. Ninety, it's like left wing schizo posting. But, like, consume product is, like, where you can find the right-wing schizo posting, and I love it. I love it. It's just the funnest shit. It's just one of those things I tell you. If you're on the internet, don't take anything personally, and just don't dox yourself. Don't do anything stupid. Although most people are just, nowadays just don't care. They're like, fuck it. It's going to happen anyway, right? And I guess that's not a bad way to look at it. But it's one of those things where it's like, just don't fuck with people and don't get fucked with. Just try to be a good, try to be a good person. Go to church. Go to church. Go to Catholic church. Watch someone be like, oh, he's a Catholic? Fucking dox his ass. I hate Catholics. We should kill them. Protestants in Mexico be like. Ooh, Masaki's going for the sexy Yama. Nah, sexy Yama has a way better stash. So yeah, this is a pretty good fight. And this... This did a lot of... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. Hug had already won the Grand Prix. Fuck, I'm stupid. <laughs> he won the Grand Prix in 96. He won the Grand Prix in 96. So after he beat uh, Masaki the second time, I think he went on to win the Grand Prix. And I forgot who he beat in the final. But he, that was his big run. That he, he This is when Andy had already won the his, all four of his world belts. Or all of his belts. Or most of them, at the very least. Oh, and Andy is not good for eye contact. He closed his eyes. Yeah, he closed his eyes. But yeah, I, I, I know how this fight goes, so I'm just going to let you watch. I'm just going to shut the fuck up and let you enjoy this shit. And that closes the show. Yep. The crazy thing about that is Andy won with just the most... Ba like, Masaki, I think, knew that he's like, all right, I need a dirty fight, right? However, he was too linear and wasn't doing the right thing. When you want to, like, dirty fight and get close to someone, you have to be, like, very methodical with it. It's not as simple as running at people. Unless you can one, unless you're Francis Ngannou, and even then he still did, did, only did that once against another not great kickboxer. Like right there, right, right there, right there. Let, let's watch the replay here. So that was that was more brutal than I thought it was. So Andy threw the right, then he went for a high kick. But yeah, let's go, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So here, right, going for this high kick. Andy goes to cross. He throws the cross head kick. That's karate style shit, and man, that's brutal. Like it literally almost knocked him off his feet. Like just boom, douche, whiplash his head, like turned him, and that was a temple shot. I think he broke something there. So yeah, absolutely brutal, absolutely brutal. So yeah, Masaki. The series goes down one two. Andy wins with the classical karate movement. He he really showed it to form, and the only way Misaki could have won, Misaki didn't execute it well enough. And yeah, ends the, ends the trilogy, two one. Really good trilogy. Really good trilogy. Not gonna lie, really entertaining. I think all the fights were good. I though I personally I see it Andy three zero. I think this is a good piece of uh, kickboxing and karate history of like two legends of the sport. And after this. Andy would retire 37 and 9 and he would retire in 99 after that. He made it to the grand like I said earlier, he made it to the grand prix finals 3 years in a row in 97 and 98. However, he could only win it once. However, it's still a legendary feat for like a K1 kickboxer or just any kickboxer making it to the finals of a tournament like that 3 years in a row. That's like some Jordan tier. Had he won, that would have been some Michael Jordan level shit. But yeah, that was that was the trilogy. After that, Masaki he would kind of deteriorate. He would still do good. He would still like. Uh, he actually won the J all Japan Grand Prix. So, and as a professional kickboxer, he won the Japan Grand Prix. Ah, it's you. Thank you. Those misses. Anyway, <laughs> interrupting my streams. 
or women shouldn't vote. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm kidding. Women are awesome. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Masaki won the 97 Grand Prix, and he would qualify for the later Grand Prix. However, it got so bad that at 99, I what was this record in 99? Uh, See, I think I wrote them, or I could I have, I, have, I have my information right here. I could just do that. So yeah, in this record, by the time that uh he went for the Grand Prix, he was sitting at about forty three wins and twenty four losses. Like he beat people like Gary Goodridge. He beat like some some solid people, but like he wasn't on that level. He lost to uh, like a lot like Peter Arts, Mike Bernando, Musashi. It's just that uh, he, he kind of teary. When he realized I can't even make the Grand Prix anymore, the opening round, he kind of just quit kickboxing and just went for professional wrestling. So, yeah, he w got into more pro wrestling and stuff like that. He did politics. He ran for politics as a, in 2013. Yeah, he did pro wrestling. He did a... I did he did all Japan like in 01 and 02. Like, I love pro wrestling, but I'm not a big fan of Japanese wrestling. I just don't think it's that good. It treats itself a bit too seriously sometimes. And when it doesn't, it's too cartoony. So, it's just, it's not, it's not a good balance of pro wrestling. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I'm not some, like, urge. Japanese wrestling sucks. There's no good Japanese legends. But I'm just more of a Mexican American style. That's just me, though. Side the point. So, yeah. Also, he did Pride. He did MMA. And man, did everyone fucking obliterate. He went 1 and 8 in MMA. If you want to see, like, go to highlights, look up. Quentin Rampage Jackson slamming him. He, like, fucking almost... He, like, broke his skull. I think he broke his skull in some areas. And really, really hurt him. Semi Schultz, another legendary kickboxer who was, wasn't that good at MMA himself. Well, no, he was good at MMA. He was decent at MMA. Just not against great guys. Like, he beat him. He went 1-0. He would get destroyed in MMA. He only has one win. He has one win in MMA, and... Yeah, so he, he he was a better kickboxer and a much better karate guy. He's a Japanese legend, but he, Masaki Satake, he's he he's not that talked about, unfortunately, on the grand scheme of the K1 legends. He's not on that Hoost, Hug, Arts, Schilt, who else? Jerome LeBanner, Bader Hari, stuff like Elster Overeem. He's not on that level. People, he's on the more hardcore fans like me would talk about him but yeah other than that he was still a great fighter it's just a shame that he kind of went out in the way that people usually do which is kind of getting embarrassed and realize you know what maybe maybe i should quit this maybe i should stop this but hey he still did good stuff with his life and he opened the gym in kyoto and andy hug as you may know unfortunately died of leukemia in, in 2001 i think yeah he died of leukemia in yeah he died in what year did he die Unfortunately, rest in peace, Andy. August twenty third, two thousand. August twenty fourth, excuse me. He is pronounced dead. They did CPR on him three times. <laughs> Horrible. So, rest in peace, Andy Hug, the legend. May God bless him. Masaki Satake. I hope you leave a good rest of your life and you make more legendary karate guys. And thank you guys for even being here. This is something that I've always wanted to do. I'm gonna do more. And because we're on the process of talking about Andy Hug and all these other guys. Oh, six people. Six people are watching. Guys, guys, why'd you get here so late? I'm at the end of the stream. Right when I'm about to do some good stuff. Yeah, uh, we just did the whole thing. This has been like an hour-long stream. My streams aren't that long. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, this... Uh, whatever, tell me to go fuck myself in chat. I don't know, just... I want someone to write in my chat, please. Oh, my lord. But anyway... But yeah, that that really was these guys. These guys true are really big legends, and the Japanese, especially because the Japanese love this stuff, they're gonna remember it for a long, long time. So yeah, legendary stuff. I'm glad I got to relive it. I think for the next stream, I might do, I might do uh, the Patrick Smith, the Patrick Smith duology, and along with his first world title against Duke Rufus, because I think that's some really, really interesting shit that is some interesting shit and i think it's good because i love i love martial arts history especially the competition history with interesting stuff like that so let's do that let's fucking do that let's go if you guys are interested hit me up on gab my gabs it should be in the chat let me see if it's there and yeah i appreciate you guys for, yeah, yeah my youtube i'm gonna upload this to youtube and bit shoot so and it's gonna stay up here on odyssey this stream so yeah if you guys want more of this I'm going to do it anyway, so, because <laughs> I do this for fun, 
And yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love you guys being here. You guys are awesome. All six of you guys. Appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. This is going to go on BitChute, where I actually have a decent following. <laughs> so please check out my BitChute. My, I have two channels. I have Side Thoughts, and which is a gaming channel, and my main BitChute channel, which is martial arts, edited stuff, and probably upload streams like this. So yeah, you guys have a good day. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. And yeah, you guys have a good night. Awesome, awesome. Fuck yeah. Watch the watch the UC fights tonight. One X was very very good. Fuck yeah, Sexyama. Let's go. See ya.